of a constitution is as powerful as what in India we call the concept of Dharma. With the Bible on one hand, with the Bhagavad Gita on the other hand, she has practiced constitutional life as a bachelor. I believe that the address I deliver today is highly significant as there can be no holistic conversation about the constitution, constitutional morality and its value without discussing the preamble to the constitution. It is this inherent substantial value that makes the preamble the guiding light for our living constitution. Today's this event ko hum prachalit kare. As prayers go up, blessings come down. Lightning the ceremonial lamp, your Lordship, Honorable Mr. Justice C.T. Kumar Sir, C.T. Ravi Kumar Sir, Attorney General, Senior Advocate, Mr. R. Venkatramani, Senior Advocate, Shri Praveen H. Panik Sir, Senior Advocate, Shri Vikas Singh Sir, Senior Advocate, Shri Pradeep Rai, Senior Advocate, Shrimati V. Mohana, Senior Advocate, Shrimati Mahalakshmi Pavani, Advocate, Shri Saju Jacob, Advocate, Prerna Singh. May this light of knowledge illumine our lives and bring resilience to the causal, subtle and the physical bodies. May we transcend to the divine and cling ourselves to be guided effortlessly, playfully by the Supreme Consciousness and that will live a life where the mind is guided by the Lord. Be illumined and purified by the radiance that the Divine transcends across all. May we all be guided by the light of knowledge. May all ignorance fade away and we all be blessed. Today remembering Madam Lily Thomas, जो हम सभी के जीवन को अपने ज्ञान के प्रकाश से प्रकाशित कर रही हैं. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us online, more than 100 people from across the country. Today is the Lily Thomas Memorial Lecture Series hosted by the Supreme Court. Women Lawyers Association together with the Law Office of Lily Thomas and Saju Jacob presenting to you the third Lily Thomas Lecture Series. This memorial Lecture Series hosted today by the Supreme Court Women Lawyers Association together with the Office of Law Office of Lily Thomas and Saju Jacob. A great day and an evening. An evening that fills our lives with ideals for which Lily Ma'am lived. Today, we have with us none other than Advocate Saju Jacob, who has been the junior of Lily Thomas Ma'am. Lily Thomas Ma'am lived with Advocate Saju Jacob till her last breath. Advocate Saju Jacob is an embodiment of the ideals for which Lily Ma'am lived. Nothing but hailing the constitution of India, Yato Dharmas, I would now invite Advocate Saju Jacob, who is the convener of Lily Thomas Lecture Series. This is the third version. We've already had two versions, a beautiful one. Lily Ma would touch a life once again today, together with me and hundreds and thousands of professionals of the legal fraternity, students and other professionals. Remember Lily Thomas Ma'am. Today, from the voice of none other than Advocate Saju Jacob, who is living her legacy. With a proud, honest and dignity, I would now invite Advocate Saju Jacob to present to us this lecture series. A very good evening to all of you. Today, on the third that's the anniversary of Advocate Lily Thomas, who is mother of many of you, who loved the legal fraternity. Three years back, she has left all of us 
on 12th December and she has gone down at 5 o'clock. Uh, that is the reason that we commemorate these uh, Lily Thomas with a memorial lecture at this time on every December 12th every year. Some people come in the world and leave such remarkable impressions in our life that it is impossible for us to forget them. I know that all of you would agree with me when I say that she has come to Supreme Court early morning by 8 o'clock and she used to sit in her chamber, famous chamber 47 till late in the evening, 9 o'clock. When I was practicing with her, and till the last moment I practiced with her, I lived with her, and we both left the Supreme Court chamber at about 8.30, and some days even afterwards, and upon the request of security guard. She has practiced 65 years in the Constitution. She has devoted her life fully for the country, and also for the jurisdictional development of Indian Constitution. She has taught everyone who has come to that chamber to love everyone and to have the constitutional ideals as the motto of love. The motto of love, according to her, is love, affection and mercy. Show mercy to all of us. That was the famous statement of Advocate Lily Thomas, with the Bible on one hand, with the Bhagavad Gita on the other hand. She has practiced constitutional life as a bachelor, and she all the way alone came from South India in the years, in the early years of 1950, and fought against all the odds of our legal uh, profession. And she has survived at that point of time. But she also enjoyed the profession, that is what she told me. Because she said that during those years, there were hardly 100 lawyers in the Supreme Court. I am lucky to inherit her legacy because she has taught me a lot of good lessons. To love everyone, to memorize everyone. If anyone has done some good deeds for you, Always be thankful, and that is what I try to do together with the Supreme Court Women Lawyers Association. I don't need to explain much about that. You all know me, and I am sure that all the speakers who are sitting on the dais, they all know her personally, and some of them know very, very closely. Today, we are blessed to have Justice C.T. Reviguma, who hails from Kerala and who hails from Changanasheri, Kottayam district, from where the Lily Thomas also hails from. <laughs> Lily Thomas' father was a legal practitioner, her grandfather was a legal practitioner, her brother was a legal practitioner, and she has moved from Kottayam to Trivandrum to study Sanskrit, Latin, and her primary schooling, high school, as well. Afterwards, she has moved to Chennai to study law, and she has completed her law under the guidance of British professors, followed by her LLM, by, un, under the guidance of famous British professors. Afterwards, she has moved alone to Delhi in a winter. And she has told me that it was very difficult for her to fight with the, the hostility of the winter weather because she is totally a stranger to this weather. She comes from South India where you have the sun every time and it is always hot. And it is very difficult to survive. But she has managed to survive here and she has made her success. I am just cutting short my speech because Justice Seti Devi Uma has kindly consented to come and he was not feeling at all. He is uh, suffering from cold, severe cold. Yesterday he was not at all feeling well 
and he told me yesterday that he would not come. At a cup and cut. And uh, that is the reason that I am cutting short and I am just getting into my job directly and he has given me he has given me a speech to read up. Your Lordship, would you, uh, would you? He cannot speak out because he has problem with the throat. And that's why I may be allowed to read out his keynote speech. Warm greetings on this chilly Delhi winter evening to our friends at the bar and bench who have joined us physically today and also to our fortunate virtual attendees who have joined us from the comfort of their warm coaches today. I think more than 200 online viewers are there. I feel very honored to be here delivering this keynote speech as we have gathered here to pay our sincere tributes to one of the brightest legal minds that our fraternity has seen. It is the good fortune every generation to see some legendary pioneers that change the course of their field so fundamentally that it becomes impossible to fathom the future path without their groundbreaking intervention. Such was the impact that the legacy of Lily Thomas has left behind for our legal fraternity. I reckon it to be more than appropriate that the organizers chose the theme to be our constitutional values as it is perfectly in tune with all the efforts of Lily Thomas who devoted her life to advocate, to instill this belief in the practitioners of law that it is our responsibility to put up a good fight to improve our existing legal system, to keep it consistent and attuned with the values of our constitution. I believe that the address I deliver today is highly significant as there can be no holistic conversation about the constitution constitutional morality and its value without discussing the preamble to the constitution. It is this inherent substantial value that makes the preamble the guiding light for our living constitution. It is fascinating to equate the preamble of our constitution to a magical key that unlocks the treasure that is our constitution of India. You know how much they teach us through all moral stories that every treasure is locked and there is always a key or a mantra to unlock the treasure. That is what a preamble is to a constitution. It is undisputed that our forefathers possessed brilliant minds and luckily we have the deliberations of these strong ingenious minds documented in the form of constituent assembly debates. Ergo, I consider it very vital for me to bring the attention of my patient audience to these debates. When the Constituent Assembly of India passed the objective resolution solemnly, all members standing, the Prime Minister at that time had made an appeal in these ways. Quote, it is a resolution and it is something much more than a resolution. It is a declaration, it is a firm resolve. It is a pledge and an undertaking and it is for all of us, I hope, a dedication. And I wish this house, if I may say so, respectful, should consider, the, consider this resolution not in a spirit of narrow legal wording, but rather look at the spirit behind that resolution. Quote close. These words also instruct the right importance of the preamble to the Constitution of India. It is a declaration. It is a firm resolution. It is a pledge. It is an undertaking, it is a dedication, and the spirit and preface of the constitution and its basic elements defining the nature of the state, that is, sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, republic, and inscribing principles like justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity, etc. Today, I would just focus on the way democratic introduced in the preamble and for that purpose, I would briefly advert to the journey of the preamble into the Constitution of India. The earliest draft of the preamble, drafted by B. N. Rao, said, quote, We the people of India, seeking to promote the common good, 
do hereby throughout chosen representatives enact adopt and give to ourselves this constitution court closed bracket shivarao's framing of india's constitution hyphen a study hyphen p dot 127 bracket closed later it was agreed to premise the it was agreed to promise the preamble on the basic principles laid down in the objectives resolution the draft preamble was finally considered by the assembly on october 17th 1949 the object of putting the preamble last was to see that it was in conformity with the constitution as accepted various amendments on this date were suggested but were subsequently rejected including the insertion of the word secular and socialism however as i said today i would briefly concentrate on the importance of the word democratic vis-a-vis the stark criticism raised against the insertion of the word democratic in the preamble by maulana hasrat mohani who coined inkilab sindaba long live the revolution in 1921 full stop maulana hasrat mohani drew attention to the preamble defining india as a sovereign democratic republic instead of an independent sovereign republic as inscribed in the objective resolution he principally agree, argued for the substitution of the word democratic with the federal he said and i quote either introduce the word federal instead of the word democratic quote closed i say drop not sorry not close high uh, dot 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 i say drop this word democratic and keep to the actual words in used in the objective resolution if you use these words independent republic my object will be sir bracket page number 434 para 2 volume 10 constituent assembly debates bracket closed full stop his anxiety was more due to india being defined as a union of states and thus the introduction of the word court federal court closed and the amendment was negative negative however i find it difficult to agree with the amendment proposed by maulana hasrat mohani seeking the omission of the word democratic for another reason it is pertinent to note that it is only the preamble of the constitution that uses the word democratic democratic in such a form while defining the nature of the state or government of india that is quote to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic quote closed full stop it seems that the word democratic in the form does not appear anywhere else in the constitution in the same form connoting the same meaning or sense but the spirit of the same is sustained by its mention in the preamble and various article of the constitution next paragraph for instance it appears in article 43b while directing the state to endeavor towards promoting democratic control and promotion of cooperative societies similar it appears in article 24 243 set 1 which empowers and directs the states to make laws relating to inter- incorporation regulation and winding up of cooperative societies based on the principles of voluntary formation democratic member hyphen control full stop the importance of the preamble is well established shrimati purnima banerji referred preamble as life breath of the constitution in constituent assembly bracket page 451 para 2 volume 10 constituent assembly debates bracket closed full stop justice mutolkar in sajjan singh versus state of rajasthan bracket 1965 1 scr 933 bracket closed referred the preamble as epitome of the basic features of the constitution in the seminal case of keshavananda bharati sri padangal varu versus state of kerala 
1973 for SEC 225. It was noted to have the stamp of deep deliberation and marked by precision and in the words of Joseph's story, also noted in the seminal case, comma, preamble is key to open the mind of makers as to the mischiefs which are to be re remedied and the objects which are to be accomplished by the provisions of the statute. Bracket, commentaries on the constitution of United States, comma, bracket closed. However, it is important, uh, its importance can also be glanced at glanced at from this angle that only the preamble expressly declares India to be a democratic country. Other than this, democracy can be read into the Indian constitution through its features like the right to vote. On that note, it may be noted that in one of the cases of Lily Thomas Hearst, that is Lily Thomas versus Speaker, Lok Sabha, 1993, 4 SEC, 234, bracket closed. It was observed that voting is formal expression of will or opinion by the persons entitled to exercise the right on the subject or issue. It is then correct to understand that voting is the breath of democracy, which is quintessential, essential and keep, keeps it alive. The preamble gives the face to the right to vote through weight like democracy. I understand the preamble to the constitution as a sky to the earth. By use of the words like sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, republic, it gives a face to different elements of the Indian constitution like democratic for the right to vote. As Mr. Nasruddin Ahmad mentioned in the Constituent Assembly debates, court, the success of a democracy depends upon the introduction of some sweet and palatable words in the Constitution. I, however, submit that the success of a democracy depends on how it is practically worked. It has nothing to do whatever with what we may state in the preamble or in the constitution. On the actual working of democracy, its success depends. Paragraph, uh, bracket, page 454, para 4, volume 10, constituent assembly debates, bracket closed. Volume 10 of the official report of constituent assembly debates, documents the debates that occurred from 6th October 1949 to 17th October 1949. It was on 17th October 1949 that the Assembly took up the discussion on Priyam. You will find it on the foot of page number 429 of volume 10 where the President of the Assembly states and I quote, I think we should get the preamble, preamble also passed today. The constitution as a whole has to be passed in its second reading and the preamble forms the part of the constitution. Therefore, the preamble cannot be postponed. It is highly appreciative how our founding fathers have had elaborately dealt with the constitution and with the question on the preamble back then in 1949 itself. You will find it interesting and you will find interesting excerpts running from page numbers 450 through 456 as well. Whereafter very detailed discussions. Dr. Ambekar gives us a lesson or two in the arena of interpretation and goes on to finally state that, quote, this preamble embodies what is the desire of every member of the House that the Constitution should have its root, its authority, its sovereignty from the people, full stop, that it has, quote closed. Thereafter, we note that 
the president of the assembly moves the no motion and the preamble stands as part of the constitution it is correct when we look back for answers in those in these debates to ascertain the intention of our forefathers because we can always deduce their hope that they had from their successors it is true that adversity breeds opportunity and it is not novel for legal system to be hit with adversities but it is always the bar and the bench along with the society that conquers every adversity to such tenor of their path ahead preamble acts as that beacon of light that guides to keep the spirit of our living document attuned to the principles so that we stay true to what our forefathers hoped and toiled for as they built this independent india i have been apprised that even law students were part of today's gathering and there was also an essay writing competition arranged for them i want to give a minuscule piece of advice of our young minds that can bring home humongous changes in their outlook and approach towards law i read these constituent assembly debates they are a rich source of knowledge and our only way to pick the brains of our skilled founding fathers you will find such treasures while reading that and it will surely be worth your time while you read it as well as in your profession in the long run thus the actual working of the democracy or the constitution depends not only on the custodians of justice but also on our society as a whole let us inspire ourselves by the examples of legends like lily thomas to continue taking care of the practical working of our constitution so that we always find the correct way to live with our living document that is the constitution of india justice city devi kumar I would request Dr. Advocate Krishnan M. Krishnan from the office of Deva Sampat Krishnan, Advocate High Court of Madras and Advocate Supreme Court of India, to present. Hello, to present a bouquet to welcome your Lordship, Honourable Attorney General, Senior Advocate Mr. M. Kankatamani, Senior Advocate Sri Praveen Parikh Sir. the bouquet uh, would request the organizing committee to bring the bouquets yeah so the bouquets are coming yes would request uh, yes so just waiting yeah so the floral welcomes are on and i would request uh, dr advocate am krishnan so to present a bouquet to senior advocate shri praveen h parikh sir attorney general senior advocate mr ar venkata ramani sir welcome to this lecture series sir i would request uh, advocate am krishnan sir to present a bouquet to senior advocate shri praveen h parikh sir I would request sir also to present a bouquet to senior advocate Shrimati Mahalakshmi Pavani ma'am. Thank you ma'am for facing the dais. I also would request sir to present a bouquet to madam senior advocate Shrimati Vimohana ma'am. Thank you so much sir. Would request sir to also present a bouquet to madam Prerna Singh advocate. Thank you so much ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for doing the honors, M. Krishnan, sir. Thank you so much, so humbled and honored. Ladies and gentlemen, yato dharmas tato jaya. Wherever there is righteousness, there is victory. And let's not stop. Sabke saath aur sabke vikas se hi. Lele ma'am bhi samajhti thi ki hum desh ko ek badi greatness ki taraf le jayenge. Chale Lele ma'am ko yad karte hain. Having said so, it's a proud privilege to have with us. none other than 
Shri R. Venkatramani sir amongst us today. Shri R. Venkatramani sir is an Indian constitutional lawyer, a senior advocate in the Supreme Court of India and currently serving as the Attorney General of India. Sir was appointed as a member law commission in the year 2010. He has been appearing for the state of Tamil Nadu as a special senior counsel for the past 12 years and also acting as a special senior counsel for the state of Andhra Pradesh and his alma mater being Loyola College Chennai and many people have also joined online from there. It's with much proud delight and pleasure that I would now request Honorable R. Venkat Ramani, sir, Honorable Attorney General of India to present your address. Over to you, sir. Let me first salute all the women lawyers of the Supreme Court Bar. And uh, it is not easy to conceive an association of women lawyers and to be able to successfully walk into the male bastion and make, still make a mark in the bar. And when persons like Lily Thomas walked into the Supreme Court bar, she was virtually walking into an alien territory, a territory fully occupied by men. To a large extent today, if you look at more than 1.8 lakh of lawyers in our country, I am told that about 15 percent of them are women. And uh, it's an important message that I gather from an evening like this, that the confluence of faiths in our country, which is demonstrated by the recitation of holy verses, this confluence is the greatest strength of our country. And I'm sure if you look into freedom struggle, we often talk about the role played by men. But there have been great women who have played historic role in the freedom struggle. And many of their lives and contributions are not so chronicled to be kept parallel to the contributions of men. So when 74 years after independence, I suppose there is too small a period in a nation's history after the constitution. The American constitution is about 300 years old at most. And if you look at the history of constitution making in the world in the past two to three hundred years, I find uh, not less than 170 and odd constitution making exercises have taken place in Europe and thereafter in other parts of the world. But the takeaway from this constitution making exercise and uh, what makes it relevant, and I think, is the idea of a constitution. The idea of a constitution is as powerful as what in India we call the concept of Dharma. Forget about which language is using this concept. It is absolutely immaterial. It could have been in any one of the Indian languages. But the concept tried to capture something very powerful, namely, how will each individual in the midst of a hierarchical social order which you have inherited or will strive to transform a hierarchical social order into an egalitarian social order. I think that is the idea of a constitution. In different parts of the world, both before the First and Second World War and post Second World War, we have the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the emergence of human rights as permeating constitutional ideas. I wouldn't like to explore the relation between human rights and the idea of a constitution except to briefly note that the idea of a constitution in my understanding is 
all power in society, private power, public power, all power in society has to be regulated. And the regulation process, what are the ideas we bring in for the purpose of regulation? So the codification of private and public power, codifying it, is what the constitution has done. When you talk of public power, we look at institutions of governance, parliament, judiciary, or governance institutions, but other centers of private power, human relations with private power, men and women have private power, families also have private power. So other centers have private power, but then the constitution says all power will be subject to the ideas and the principles of the constitution. And his idea of a constitution has now become part of global psyche. Right? Look at what's happening in China in the recent you know, weeks when people are able to now to protest in the streets and voice their, raise their voices against oppressions. So we are moving slowly at a global level towards a social order when every individual is able to feel what one calls the feel of freedom. Today, if we are able to share our thoughts and ideas, it's because each one of us, every five years, voting people, governments into power, every five years, we are able to feel the feel of freedom. And that's very important. And if that feel of freedom is important for each one of us, I'm sure the journey of a constitution where we participate in a meaningful way. If you look at what the Supreme Court of India has done in the past couple of decades post-emergency, you find it simply marvelous to find, you know, to note that other than what the rest of the constitutions have done, including the US Constitution and the US contributions, post-emergency, what the Supreme Court of India has done is virtually to transform the very understanding of a constitution to transform the role people can play in the constitution making and the constitution processes. To transform the relationship between the different, the diversity of faith in our country. <laughs> Wonderful. And I think that's what is a great heritage and treasure ought to be. And therefore, when I said I salute every woman lawyer here, I invite every one of you young, those who are entering this bar, to be part of this very important process and I'm sure each one of you can play that wonderful role in your own individual and magnificent way. I used to, when I talk to students in law schools, I say, look here, whenever I walk into the court, Supreme Court every day, I look at what's happening in the court and every issue that I brought to the court are not merely cases. We are not dealing with cases. As lawyers, of course, we deal with briefs, but the Supreme Court is dealing with issues. The whole national panoramic issues between people, governments, individuals unfold their dimensions for what purposes? For the purpose of a resolution through a meaningful, orderly, peaceful and a rule of law resolution. And therefore, when you talk of living with a constitution, idea of a constitution, if you just look back to 75 years, it's important just Ravi Kumar was talking about the preamble, democracy. And uh, if those constitution makers were to live today, they would have put, you know, looked at the sky in wonderness and said, what? This constitution which we gave to the people of the country have transformed itself. It is a wonderful flower. And I think we ought to be proud of what we have done and we ought to be part of, continuing to be part of the great journey. And uh, I, I, not merely as an attorney general for India, as a, as a practitioner in, in Supreme Court for <coughs> almost four decades, what uh, comes to your mind is how will, in the, in, the, in the midst of an unequal social order, for whatever reason, I'm not getting into ideologies, whether it is Marxism or capitalism or whatever they are. So every, every ideology has their small little problems and their ends and their failures and their deficiencies.
But the genius of the human species is, I think, much larger than the ideologies. So the genius of the human species is what makes the constitution really working. And I'm sure, again, welcome each and every women lawyer in the Supreme Court bar to be able to be part of this genius of the working of the Indian constitution. And uh, I, I, I remember, finally, I have shared many, many years with Justice Krishnaya, who was one of the great champions of gender justice. I vividly remember when he used to talk about gender justice, he will hold his white kerchief on his hand, always dressed in dhoti and white shirt, and say, women the empowerment. I always remember that. And uh, I'm sure if Justice Krishnaya had been here today, he would have loved to be part of this wonderful evening. I remember Krishnaya invoking him here in the midst of all of you. I am thankful to this opportunity for speaking to you. I would love to go on for hours together on this importance of living with the constitution. But again here, and I thank you for this very good evening. With your words, we have lived Lily Ma'am once again. Ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Attorney General Sir has to leave, so I would request the organizing committee to present a token of a love and gratitude in the form of a memento to Honorable Attorney General Sir. Honorable Attorney General Sri R. Venkatramani Sir, this is a small token of gratitude and love from the office of Lily Thomas and Sergeant Jacob as we observe the third Lily Thomas Memorial Lecture. Aapke aane se hum sabhi ko aur protsahan mila. May the legal fraternity hail under your guidance. Thank you so much, sir. Much honored and humbled. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Rukna to mujhe aata hi nahi, kyunki main to samay ho na. Samay ko to chalna hi hai. The wheel of time will always move. And so, the wheel in the Indian flag represents action. And in Indian spirituality, it is the consciousness which has to keep moving. Having said so, ladies and gentlemen, we have one person amongst us who is one of the pillars of our country in framing the legal fraternity. None other than Senior Advocate Sri Praveen H. Parikh, sir, who is the President ISIL and the Confederation of the Indian Bar. I would now request you, Honorable Sir, to present your address. Uh, we are online today, so Honorable Mr. Justice M. R. Shah, Honorable Mr. Justice Ravi Kumar, Mr. Attorney General, Mr. Vinkat Raman, and Mr. Vikas Singh, President, Mr. Pradeep Rai, Vice President of SCBA, uh, Mahalakshmi Pawani, President of the Supreme Court Women's Law Association, friends and best wishers of our dear Lily Thomas. Lily was one of the earliest in our country to file public interest litigations. She is one of the first lady to pass LLM degree. Lily joined the Supreme Court Bar in 1960. Her chamber was next to my chamber block. Lily used to file many litigations, not for her clients only, but for doing something for the society. She had challenged in the Supreme Court the validity of advocates on record system in January 1964. She contended every advocate has a right to practice in all courts in accordance with acts and rules. The Supreme Court cannot take away those rights. She said that the Rule 16.1 of the Supreme Court rules should be declared as ultra violence. The Supreme Court did not accept the suggestions. Lily filed a writ petition in the Supreme Court, also challenging to protect the rights of the married women, challenging Conversions where a non-Muslim would convert to Muslim merely to marry more than one wife without divorcing the first wife. The Supreme Court in the case of Lily Thomas versus Union of India in 2006 SCC 224 held that the change of religion does not dissolve the marriage performed under the Hindu Marriage Act between two Hindus. <coughs> At the age of 85, Lily won Landmark, uh, landmark case in Lily Thomas versus Union of India 2013 7 SCC 653 
challenging that members of India's, India's Indian parliaments and members of state legislative bodies convicted of a crime or is in jail become ineligible to run for the elections or hold in elected seats. I have been a great friend of Lily. She used to come to my chambers to discuss what should be done in law and what I can do for various issues. Justice M.R. Shah became a Supreme Court judge in 2018 and has authored, authored 384 judgments and has been a part of 752 benches so far. He was part of the bench which allowed daughters to have the same right to Hindu ancestral property as their brothers and also allowed for no charge on interest from borrowers who availed RBI's loan, loan moratorium scheme. Justice City uh, Ravi Kumar is one of the few judges to be elevated to the Supreme Court directly from his presence from parent High Court of Kerala. Some notable judgments given by him include challenges to prevention of Money Laundry Act, CO Moto Powers of National Green Tribunal, FCRA Amendment, Maharashtra MLA Suspension, and Jafiyas Jafriya and Gujarat uh, Riots SIT. Senior Advocate Venkat Ramani, who recently became the Attorney General of India, is apolitical and a true jurist, having spent more than four decades in the Supreme Court. Mr. Pradeep Rai, a good friend of ours and the Vice President of the Supreme Court Bar Association, is doing a lot of work for the women advocates. And I, uh, I, I thank all the women lawyers that you had someone to lead you in good old days then. They were very, very few lawyers, very lawyers. Thank you. Thank you so much, respected sir. Life of Lily Ma'am tells us something. It tells us that you have to stand for yourself. Nobody else would. She believed in justice. For justice is the crown and glory of all the virtues. Having said so, ladies and gentlemen, it's my proud privilege, our proud privilege to have with us none other than Senior Advocate Sri Pradeep Rai, sir, amongst us today. Sir is the Vice President of Supreme Court Bar Association and is the Chairman of India Legal Aid Center and India Legal Research Center Foundation. He's also been the Vice Chairman of National Anti-Doping Agency and a mentor to hundreds and hundreds of legal interns every year. It is with much pride, delight and honor that I would now invite Senior Advocate Sri Pradeep Rai sir to address the gathering. Sir, our six time president of Supreme Court Bar Association and ten time president of Pro Bar Association and president of ISIL. Pony Mahalakshmi Ji, my former colleague and one of the big support for me in the EC. B. Mohana Ji, Saju Jacob Ji, Prerna Singh, other EC members, my former colleague K. B. Bharti. The anchor of this program, Sumitra Ji, associates of chambers of Lily Thomas or Sajid Jacob, both are same, and dear students. Celebrating the life of Lily Thomas is a kind of motivating ourselves. And the purpose of such programs, I don't know that where and how this idea is started that we should have in this way because those days is because of COVID time many of us could not organize the programs physically but I am sure that within three to four years Sanju sir you will take this program to a different heights and the life of such persons should be celebrated and those celebrations will give us inner strength a person coming from a ruler background, coming to Delhi. Delhi is not, those days, I don't think that South population, Malayali population was that much. And then making a place in Supreme Court 
and each and every day coming to the court till her last breath. I think last four five days she could not come, otherwise she was coming every day. And whenever we used to go to her chamber, she will make us sit, she will ask some questions, she will guide us. And her guidance was immense. It gives us a lot of insight on the issues of constitution, even the functioning of the court, working, and then how a senior should behave with the juniors. He was also fond of Pariksar. Because normally what happens when a junior joins, those days there was no concept of payment. Very few chambers like PH Parik they used to pay. Otherwise, if you have joined a chamber, that itself was enough. But she will make sure that a person who has joined her chambers or a person who has been associated with her and if she feels that he is not financially equipped to support himself, she will ask someone to take care of that person. Exactly. And he has sent several messages. He was the messenger, Saju Jacob sir, and he all the messages be honored. And we, I still feel that Saju sir, what you have done for her, for that only, I respect you too much. She was not a feminist, she was a humanist. And she always used to say that you see, India should also be known for the happiness index, like Bhutan. Because they don't measure the development of the nation by GDP, they measure it by happiness index. That whether the persons who are citizens, they may be financially well, but they may not be happy. How they should be happy? Education, health, shelter, food, and the quality of life. Quality of life doesn't mean that you have a big palace and you are staying. I have seen so many rich people committing suicide. Even if you are a farmer and you are a very poor person, you, feel you may be happy. I also hail from rural background. We used to go to a school where even buildings were not there. We used to study under a tree till class 10th. And thereafter I came to the city. I am the first person in the family who came to the city. And I always, whenever I said, she said, you see, you should tell this. I said, ma'am, why? She said, if you say this, there will be so many persons, they will feel that we are better equipped than you. Why we can't do this? And I believe it, that many students who are sitting here, who are doing better than us, and they will be doing much, much better than us. Because if we can do, why they can't do it? There was a matter in which the some of the MLAs of Meghalaya under 191, they can't have the dual post, but Meghalaya being the sixth dual state, some of the MLAs, they were uh, occupying the post of subcommittee chairman, also the standing committee chairman. At the same time, they were occupying MDCs, chairman of district councils, because there was no judiciary there. Judiciary means district judiciary is MDCs. Whenever there is a dispute between tribal to tribal, it will go to the MDC. Our dispute between tribal and non-tribal, again it will go to MDC. Only non-tribal disputes used to go to the district judiciary. So B, there was a question, it was raised and then the court appointed me court commissioner to submit a report. I thought who is the better person whom to ask about this provision of the constitution being from Kerala and understanding the sixth schedule of the constitution, she briefed me nicely. And she told me that you see, you have to go in the intent that when this constitution, this provision was actually enacted or drafted, what was the intent of legislation? So the intent of legislation was never been that a person who is occupying a chair should also occupy another chair and not give 100% at both the places because one assignment means that you are 100% giving to that assignment. You can't have two jobs together. And on that principles, I submitted the report and I am fortunate that because of submission of that report, that tradition of that state is over. Now persons occupy one office only. They, they can't have the two offices, a kind of underlying message and authority given by her. I don't think I am crossing the time limit. If I am crossing, please, please remind me. There was a case in which I was appearing, there is a dead man's association in uh, Ajamgarh, Uttar Pradesh. I was appearing for that association because so many persons, despite 
Being alive, the family members, they declare them dead and they grab their property. In those matters, I was appearing and I was stuck somewhere. I said, what I should do? Is he said, you go to National Human Rights Commission. I was assisting those days, Honorable Justice Venkat Chalaya, who was the chairman of National Human Rights Commission. And I was fortunate on his guidance and even her support, I could also work with Honorable Justice J.S. Verma. And both the chief justices, they supported me for the prison reforms. And I, because of her guidance, when the issue was raised, we made the officers accountable. That the officers who are actually deleting the names of a person from the village register, they should be brought to the law. And because of that, this great service was done. Later, a movie was also made on this dead man's and dead man's walking and all these stories came. And now, only few cases are there. Only six, seven or eight cases are there pending where the persons are going to the courts to declare themselves alive. Many other things, like even Council of Ministers used to raise that, where is the concept of Council of Ministers? Council of Ministers means that the decision taken by Council of Ministers which collectively that shows the wisdom of entire cabinet. But the tendency is such, I will not name one Council of Ministers, any Council of Ministers, even in our executive committee. That also happens, Pawaniji is there, KB Bharti is there. If you do something, many others will start raising an issue. But now, that, and that is good. I, I believe that such traditions of objecting something is not a bad thing. Ultimately, you may prevail if you are right. But so many places, you will not find even a discussion in the cabinet. They will just sign it, what the CM is saying, what the other authorities are saying. If that is the way, that is not the reflection of collective responsibility and Prime Minister or Chief Minister being first among equals. So her insight was great. I don't want to take this long, but if there is another time and a kind of occasion, I will certainly do something for this lecture series in her memory and we will try to take it to new heights. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, respected sir. And with that, I remember William Shakespeare who once said that the wheel of justice would burn in an equal measure. And why not? For justice and power has to be brought together. The peace and justice should be insane. As we believe in Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, remembering Madam Miss Lily Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, having said so, padhi likhi jo ghar ki nari ho kutum ki shiksha sari. We remember Honorable Prime Minister who always says that the women need to contribute in the economy of our country. And one such leading woman is amongst us today. None other than Senior Advocate Madam V. Mohana. Being on the panels of different courts, tribunals, and as a panel law for the Government of India, Madam is the member of the Supreme Court Gender Sensitization Committee. Please join your hands together to ma welcome Madam V. Mohana for her address. Good evening to all. I am very honored and thankful for this wonderful opportunity to speak on the third anniversary of the great Lily Thomas. In fact, uh, the speakers before me, the uh, Honorable Justice Ravi Kumar, Learned Attorney General, Mr. Praveen Pare, Ms. Mahalakshmi, all of them, in fact, refer to the contributions made by Ms. Lily Thomas and especially the first two speakers were talking about how to work the constitution. It's not merely by the courts, it's also by the institution of the, the together, with the lawyers especially working for the constitution, for the development of the constitution, how it has transformed over the years. One such personality who has contributed for development of the law, especially in fields of constitutional law and other varied aspects is late Lily Thomas. In fact, I am amazed at her talent and her deep thinking and analysis of the constitution. At a time when we were all, we wouldn't have imagined, like Mr. Venkatramani had pointed out, that 60s when she came into the Supreme Court. As everyone had pointed out, she passed law on the 15th, of, she enrolled on the 15th of November 1955 and 
started practicing in the Supreme Court after her LLM in 1960. Those days, actually there was no advocate on record examination till the time it was the Supreme Court rules were amended in 1962. So, in, when the exam aspect was introduced, my earlier speakers had pointed out that she had challenged the advocate on record examination. She didn't challenge it not, because that she cannot write the examination. She wanted to bring home a point that in fact under section 52 of the Advocates Act, all advocates are entitled to practice in the Supreme Court. She argued very beautifully, in fact ably and consistently the judge points out moderately is what the prefix is says when she argued, presented, and she herself filed it and argued it. She said, practice will include plead and also act. So therefore, when the section 52 says you can practice throughout and in the Supreme Court, it will include your filing and as well as acting on behalf of a client. She also very beautifully analyzed Article 77 and then said, see, when you have the, it's the, uh, the entry 77, I'm sorry, entry 77 of the list one, gives the parliament power to make legislation as far as practicing in the court. When that is taken by the parliament, the Supreme Court under 145, the Supreme Court rules are framed under 145. She argued under 145, Supreme Court cannot frame rules as to how to practice and the qualifications of a practitioner in the Supreme Court. She tried to bring out a very fine distinction saying that is not in the realm of the Supreme Court under 145, but it is under entry 77 in which the Advocates Act has come and therefore the Supreme Court is wrong in introducing such a condition. However, this was vetoed by the Supreme Court, a bench of, a constitution bench of five judges led by Rajagopal Iyengar is the author of the judgment. He wrote that the arguments though very, very attractive, practice is always subject to the rulemaking power of the Supreme Court. So therefore, when you read about, there are two items in the section which says, one is about practice, the other program, other aspect of the section, which says about the person who will come and practice before the Supreme Court. So therefore, the Supreme Court had ample power. But it's not about the getting of advocate on record examination uh, over, uh, quashed or anything. It is the, uh, the will and the courage and the outspoken attitude of our Lily Thomas, which is very inspiring. And it has led to so many other subsequent petitions of challenge to this advocate on record examination. It is still before uh, the uh, Honorable Supreme Court under consideration, one such petition. So therefore, I am trying to bring home this, that in those early years, she started agitating for the rights, which is not only on her behalf, but also on behalf of the entire bar. You no, know, she delved into various aspects of law. If a very little known case I would like to point out is one about, we all know about the impeachment motion of Justice V. Ramaswamy, which was brought in the parliament, which was not actually, which was not successful. In fact, in 1993, what she uh, challenged was, after the, uh, the speaker put in the motion, when it was brought in the parliament and it was discussed and the voting was taken, it was paid. She brought out a petition in her name and he argued it also. She said, this, there are eyes and nose, but when there are a distinct number of persons out of the two-thirds present and voting, a people who abstained from voting should be construed to have accepted the motion, is what she argued. It's a very peculiar and a very nuanced way of agitating the right that she wanted that the motion has been defeated only because certain people had abstained. So therefore, she went, she filed this petition and then said it is supported by a majority because some, many of them have abstained. So she brought, she wanted to bring in a concept of abstinence will also amount to acquiescence. However, the court dealt with it in a very, very final way. It is not only her petition which is of importance to us. It is also very important to know how the court was taken through various provisions of the constitution and how it brought about this change and the aspect was dealt with in a very beautiful way by the Supreme Court. It is a lesson for all of us. In 1993, this judgment is 
yeah, on this Lily Thomas versus Speaker Lok Sabha, in which it says, the Supreme Court held that right to vote means right to exercise the right in favor or against the motion or resolution. Such a right implies right to remain neutral as well. Neutral means indifferent, unbiased, impartial, not engaged on either side. Conceptually, it's not aligning with either view. But what happens when a person is entitled to vote on a resolution, participate in the discussion, but abstains from voting? It is neither neutrality nor expression of opinion one way or the other, yet it is legitimate and valid. In removal of an elected representative by vote of no confidence, neutrality, partial or complete is not unknown. Your construction as suggested by the petitioner would lead to uncertainty as if non-exercise of a right by a member even though present amounts to support, it shall frustrate the entire removal process based on exercise of right. What the court ultimately said, it is two-third present and voting is the language of Article 124.4, which he wanted to be struck down as non-workable. The court said it's not possible and it's not correct because 124.4 clearly says present and voting in a positive manner. So if somebody has voted, it assumes the, the validity of a vote. And if somebody abstains, then it cannot be continued as a voting right. So therefore, these are uh, two important aspects which actually I would I was very impressed with. In fact, whether she lo loses or wins is not the point here. The point is the finer aspects of the law that she was taking up at what age and at what level of exposure that we are at. I am amazed. In fact, uh, these other judgments which my friends were referring to about the representation of people act under section 8.4 when it when 8.4 of the representation of people act has been quashed. She argued. In, uh, that these are there is a fine distinction when the legislature made a difference between a person who is about to become a member about to be elected and a person who is a sitting MLA or an MP that there can be no distinction the Supreme Court accepted her argument and then quashed 8.4 as violative of article 109 and 191 so these are few judgments in which Lily Thomas has given her contribution to the development of the Constitution of course, the conversion angle has contributed to the great extent to the women's welfare in general and matrimonial life for the women. So, on this day, while uh, paying our tributes to Lily Thomas, like Mahalakshmi also said, my dear friend Mahalakshmi also pointed out that we all have inspired a lot from late Lily Thomas and we also hope that more such people, especially women, come forward to develop for to work towards the development of the law, especially working of the constitution and the institution as well. Thank you so much. To live in the hearts we leave behind is not to die. Thomas Campbell. A very good evening to all my esteemed guests, presence physically and virtually. Today, on the third death anniversary of Miss Lily Isabel Thomas, we have gathered here to commemorate the memories of Lily Ma'am. I, on behalf of the Supreme Court Women Lawyers Association, thank you, esteemed guests. Thank uh, Shri R. Venkatramani, Attorney General for India, Shri P. H. Parak Sir, Pradeep Rai Sir, Miss Mohana, advocate, Senior Advocate, Mr. Saju Jacob, for joining us. A distinguished and dauntless lawyer, a zealous pioneer of social activism, and a meticulously empowered independent woman. W words are less to describe the perseverance and fervor of Miss Lily Thomas. Miss Lily Thomas was born in 1927 in Kotayam and grew up in Trivandrum. Although she did hail from a family of lawyers, it is no surprise that with her indomitable spirit and enthusiasm, she undertook the courage to progress and flourish in her own name as an eminent lawyer of this country from migrating from South India to North India. Back in 1950s, when females did not enjoy the improved social status as they do now, and education was not as, as accessible, Miss Lily Thomas stout-heartedly pursued legal academia. Her dexterity started to reflect back in her years of academia when she became the first woman to complete an LLM degree from Madras University. Little did everyone know that it was just a drop in the ocean of revolution and success. She joined the Honorable High Court of Madras in 1955 and the Honorable Supreme Court in 1960. 
She was a relentless server of the Indian legal system who made her way to the books of history by way of her painstaking efforts that aimed towards an improved uh, framework of law. Her thrive for better administration of justice was evident as she valorously challenged diverse existent laws of the country that resulted in sheer success, improvement and development of the Indian legal framework. For me, she was a firebrand. She stood for women's rights. For Miss Lily Thomas, age was only a number. Even in her later years of life, she remained fueled by her zest for change and continued to practice with utmost fondness. With over 64 years of experience at the bar, she inexorably thrived for change, especially in fields like constitutional law, women's rights, and issues of personal liberty. Out of her numerous accolades and achievements, I would like to commemorate a few feathers on her cap that continue to enhance the legal administration till date. Her petition seeking amendment of the Representation of People Act is one of her most remarkable legal battles wherein she sought for prevention of convicted politicians getting elected. Much celebratedly, the Honorable Supreme Court in 2013 allowed her petition and upheld the disqualification of a legislator immediately when convicted for two or more years of, uh, for an offence. At the grand old age of 85, she became the lawyer behind the clipping of the wings of convicted politicians and it was a landmark judgment and a great victory for this crusader of justice. This, ex this achievement exemplifies her undying commitment and persistence. Inspirationally, this glorious judgment of the Supreme Court of India was preceded by two dismissed attempts seeking amendment of the RP Act. However, for a personality as stalwart as Miss Lily Thomas, this dismissal was not a setback, rather a source of motivation to persist and persevere, which finally resulted in success in her third attempt. Another paramount legal battle of Miss Lily Thomas was aimed at protection of rights of married women, challenging the conversion of faith for bigamy. By way of her petition, she brought forth before the Honorable Supreme Court that whether a non-Muslim who converts to the Muslim faith without any real change in belief, but merely with a view to avoid an earlier marriage or to enter into a second marriage, would be liable for the offense of bigamy under IPC. On 5-5-2000, that's exactly 22 years, years ago, a division bench held that a change of religion doesn't dissolve the marriage performed under HMA between two Hindus. Through this PIL, she fought for the rights of millions of women. Upon her strong conveyancing and uns unshaken pursuit, she won this battle in 2000 when the Supreme Court held such a marriage to be void and in violation of Article 21 of the Constitution of India. Besides the aforesaid highlights of her success and determination, Miss Lily Thomas tried for much more, like her challenge to the validity of advocate on record system and other constitutional developments until she left for a heavenly abode on 12th December 2019. Even till the age of 92, she was blessed to perpetuate her aspirations and thrive for improved administration of justice delivery, the fruits of which we shall continue to enjoy. On this auspicious day, I pay tribute to the astounding personality phenomenal women, a lawyer and resilient women. Miss Lily Thomas was and, and her inspiration resonance will always continue to encourage us for revolution and change. Empathizing with the situation of women lawyers, she has made colossal contributions since 1955. She had initiated for the building of the All India Women Conference at Bhagwanda's Road, which provided for shelter and food for many struggling women lawyers. The purpose of building this hostel was for the betterment of living condition of women lawyers because of its proximity to courts. Miss Lily Thomas will remain in our hearts, in our memories, and she will continue to inspire the younger generation of women lawyers to stand up for a cause. Thank you so much. And, and I thank uh, the Attorney General for his precious time. Thank you, sir.
as our program is also on virtual platform so thanking everyone for watching us in such a huge number as i came to know that 400 more than 400 people are watching on virtual platform a very good evening now lordships are left but still a very good evening to honorable justice minister emma shah sir honorable justice ct ravi kumar sir honorable attorney general r venkatramani sir honorable president supreme court bar association mr vikas singh sir honorable senior advocate praveen h parik president isil and confederation of indian bar honorable senior advocate b mohana ma'am honorable vice president supreme court bar association mr pradeep rai sir honorable senior advocate mahalakshmi pavni ma'am president supreme court women lawyers association advocate mr sadhu jacob sir from the office of lily thomas and all the other attendees today i prerna singh would like to express my heartfelt gratitude towards all the keynote speakers the participants and the priests who have through the medium of their prayers blessed the soul of lily thomas ma'am i being secretary of the supreme court women lawyers association see great pleasure to address the audience who have gathered here in the memory of advocate lily thomas ma'am who was the patron of the supreme court women lawyers association i express my thanks to honorable justice ct ravi kumar sir honorable attorney general senior advocate r venkata ramani sir honorable uh, advocate vikas singh sir honorable senior advocate praveen h parik sir honorable senior advocate v mohana ma'am honorable senior advocate pradeep rai sir honorable senior advocate mahalakshmi pavni ma'am advocate mr saju jacob sir from the office of lily thomas and saju jacob i also would like to thank our media partner live law india legal and verdictum all the colleagues